Britain has quietly entered the hypersonic race, and almost nobody saw it coming. Reports now claim that a prototype of the Tempest fighter jet, still years away from official deployment, has secretly completed a test flight where it surged past Mach 5, over 6,000 kilometers per hour, fast enough to outrun missiles and cross entire countries in minutes. There was no public announcement, no media broadcasts, only silence, followed by whispers in defense circles and radar operators across Europe trying to make sense of a trail that appeared and vanished in seconds. Imagine footage here, a sleek black aircraft slicing through the clouds, shock waves erupting around its nose, vapor cones bending with the force of raw speed. As military satellites track a blurred heat signature across the sky, one question begins to spread across NATO bases, Moscow, Beijing, and Washington. Has Britain just created the fastest combat jet on Earth? And more importantly, why is the rest of the world suddenly watching the skies? Let's dive in. The Tempest isn't just a fighter jet. It's the centerpiece of Britain's bold combat air strategy, a plan to ensure that the UK remains a top-tier air power in a world of stealth drones, hypersonic missiles, and AI-driven warfare. The program is led by a powerful alliance of British defense giants, BAE Systems, Rolls-Royce, Leonardo UK, and MBDA, with Italy and Sweden joining as official partners under what is now called the GCAP, Global Combat Air Program. But what makes Tempest different from existing fighters like the Eurofighter Typhoon or the American F-35? Instead of being just a piloted aircraft, Tempest is being built as a manned-unmanned hybrid combat system. A pilot can fly it or hand over control to an advanced AI co-pilot that helps make split-second decisions in combat. It will command swarms of loyal wingman drones, carry directed energy weapons, like laser systems, to disable enemy aircraft or missiles, and maintain full stealth against radar using adaptive camouflage and radar-absorbing materials. Tempest will be connected to satellites, ground stations, naval fleets, and unmanned aircraft through a cloud-based combat network, meaning it won't fight alone. It will fight as the brain of an entire digital war system. What makes the Mach 5 test so shocking is that official designs only hinted at super cruise and high-speed capability, not hypersonic flight. If true, this means Tempest is no longer just a sixth-generation fighter. It could be the world's first hypersonic-capable warplane, able to penetrate enemy airspace before radars even detect it. This isn't just a jet. It's Britain rewriting the rulebook of air warfare. What happened during the test is still cloaked in secrecy, but defense insiders have pieced together a chilling sequence of events. Somewhere over remote airspace, believed to be above the North Sea or a classified testing range, an early prototype of the Tempest, possibly an unmanned or AI-supported variant, was launched under strict radio silence. Instead of using traditional afterburning turbofan engines, experts say the aircraft may have been equipped with an experimental propulsion system developed by Rolls-Royce, a combined cycle engine that works as a jet engine at lower speeds and transitions into a ramjet or scramjet beyond Mach 3. Once the aircraft passed Mach 4, radar stations in Norway, Scotland, and even parts of Germany detected a heat signature, but no visual radar lock. Within seconds, it broke past Mach 5, reaching hypersonic velocity and then disappeared from all conventional tracking systems. Why is Mach 5 such a big deal? At that speed, over 6,000 kilometers per hour or 3,800 miles per hour, the aircraft compresses the air in front of it so violently that it creates plasma around its surface. The airframe begins to glow with heat. Temperatures rise to over 1,000 degrees Celsius, and metal alloys start to weaken unless made from advanced materials like carbon-carbon composites and titanium aluminides. Only missiles and experimental drones have reached speeds like this. If the Tempest survived that flight, maintained control, and then returned safely or self-landed autonomously, Britain didn't just make a fast jet. They crossed into a realm once reserved only for hypersonic weapons. No official footage of the Tempest test has been released, but satellite-based infrared systems reportedly spotted a thermal flash and a plasma trail at high altitude. Military observers initially assumed it was a missile test. It wasn't. It changed direction mid-flight, 
Something missiles cannot do at that speed without breaking apart. That's when analysts knew this wasn't a weapon being launched. It was an aircraft being flown. Why is this being kept secret? Because the first nation to master a hypersonic manned fighter would hold a strategic advantage unlike anything seen since the invention of stealth technology. And right now, whispers say, Britain might be first. Reaching Mach 5 isn't just about raw engine power. It's about surviving physics itself. Most fighter jets, like the F-22 or Eurofighter Typhoon, max out around Mach 2. The air becomes too hot, the engines choke, and the airframe begins to melt under pressure. For the Tempest to push past Mach 5, Britain had to combine technologies that previously only existed in secret labs or missile systems. At the heart of this leap is Rolls-Royce's experimental adaptive cycle engine, rumored to be a hybrid between a traditional jet engine and a scramjet. At lower speeds, it works like a normal fighter jet engine. But once Tempest accelerates beyond Mach 2 or 3, internal components shift, air bypasses the turbine, and the engine begins operating like a ramjet or scramjet, compressing air using pure speed instead of rotating blades. This allows combustion at extreme velocity, powering the aircraft into the hypersonic range without tearing itself apart. Then comes the heat problem. At Mach 5, the friction with the atmosphere makes the aircraft's surface glow white hot. Traditional aluminum and steel would liquefy. So the Tempest is reportedly built using advanced heat-resistant materials. Titanium aluminide, ceramic composites, and even carbon-carbon structures similar to what NASA used on the space shuttle to survive re-entry. Some leaks even suggest that the aircraft uses active cooling systems, circulating cold fuel through the skin of the jet to absorb heat before it enters the engines. Tempest isn't just fast, it's intelligent. Every surface of the aircraft is covered in sensor networks and AI-driven stabilizers that make micro-adjustments thousands of times per second allowing precise control at hypersonic speed where human reflexes are too slow. This AI also handles electronic warfare, scanning for missile launches, hacking enemy radars, and even directing unmanned, loyal wingman drones that fly alongside Tempest like robotic bodyguards. And then there are the weapons. Tempest isn't designed to just fire missiles. It is being built to carry next-generation directed energy weapons. High-power combat lasers and microwave disruptors could disable enemy aircraft, fry electronic systems, or detonate incoming missiles midair. Unlike traditional jets, Tempest won't need to carry dozens of missiles. It might just need a beam of light. To control all of this chaos, the cockpit isn't traditional either. Instead of analog switches and dials, pilots use a virtual cockpit projected onto their helmet visor, powered by augmented reality. AI co-pilots help fly, target, jam, evade, and even negotiate drone formations in the middle of combat. The jet is more computer than machine. Put simply, Tempest isn't just a fighter jet. It's a flying supercomputer wrapped in stealth armor, powered by a rocket, and cooled like a spaceship, built not for today, but for the wars of the next 50 years. If Britain's Tempest really just touched Mach 5, the balance of air power has quietly shifted. Until now, only missiles and experimental drones could reach hypersonic speeds. No country, not even the U.S., Russia, or China, has confirmed a manned fighter jet crossing that threshold. This puts the U.K. in a position nobody expected, not just participating in next-gen warfare, but possibly leading it. For rivals like Russia and China, this is a wake-up call. They've invested billions into hypersonic missiles, thinking no fighter could outrun them. Now, a jet like Tempest could evade their defenses, strike before radar detects it, and command drone swarms at the same time. Even allies in NATO are stunned, because this isn't America's technology. It's British. It signals a Europe that isn't just defending itself, but pushing military technology forward. Countries like Japan, Italy, and Saudi Arabia are already interested in joining or buying into the Tempest program. Because in future wars, whoever controls hypersonic air dominance controls the sky, the battlefield, and the first 30 seconds of every conflict. And if this secret test is real, Britain might have just entered that future first.